Hello everyone, James Phillips with Cats and Phillips PA and the Firearm Firm Channel. Today we are going to discuss an incident out of Columbia County, Florida that not only greatly troubles me, but also reminds me why I have dedicated my practice to defending the law-abiding citizens from the government agents who abuse their power. But before I step onto my soapbox, please take a moment to show your support for the Second Amendment and disdain for government tyrants by clicking the like button below and by subscribing to our channel by clicking the subscribe icon in the lower right hand corner of this video. On October the 31st, 2022, 61 year old James Hodges, who is legally blind, was walking down a sidewalk when he was stopped and detained by Columbia County Deputy Sheriff Jamie Goad. Deputy Goad Supervisor Sergeant Harrison arrived on the scene shortly after the detention. The entire encounter between Mr. Hodges and the two deputies was recorded on Deputy Goad's body camera, which Mr. Hodges obtained a copy of and posted it on his YouTube page. So let's watch the video taken directly from Mr. Hodges' YouTube page, and then we will discuss it. Hi there. Hey. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking it. The navigational age. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Yeah, I am actually. What's your name and date of birth? I don't have to give that unless. Yes, sir. I was investigating. You have reasonable. Do you want me to put suspicion? you in handcuffs right now? Yes, sir. I do. What is your suspicion? It looks like you're carrying a gun in your back pocket. I'm stopping to make sure you're carrying it properly. You well, don't have, have you to... ensured that it's not a firearm? No, you keep turning so I can't see it. You don't have to be a dick to me. Well, you're being one to me. No, sir. I'm Have doing my job. Day. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? It does not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put supervisor, you in here? He's right here. All right. Don't, you don't. Sir, what's the stop you for? For a walking stick. So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really? present it, okay? And now she's asking me for to ID. Okay. I don't need the ID unless there's okay. reasonable articulated suspicion and her that I have committed a crime and committing a crime and or about to do a crime. Sir, and her suspicion was that you were armed, okay, and she's asking you for your ID. Well, now right. she has verified that I am not armed, right. so there is no you problem. You got your ID or not? I do have my ID, okay. but you don't need it, okay? Okay. Seven seven whiskey mark detained. I don't know where his wallet is. Where's your wallet at, sir? I don't have a wallet on me. Okay, where's your ID? Where's your ID? In my pocket. Which pocket? You are not allowed to search me. It's in this pocket. Names and badge numbers. up here in the dark for jury duty, which was canceled. Why aren't you using your stick? You don't have to use your stick all the time? Well, not all the time. 26. Green. All right, Mr. Hodges. Was that that hard? It's going to be. I want your name and your badge number. You know, I put him in jail for resisting. Okay. As you just saw, 
Deputy Go detained Mr. Hodges because she allegedly thought his folded up walking stick in his back right pocket was a silver pistol with a white grip. She asked him what was in his back pocket and he told her it was a navigational aid. She asked for his name and date of birth and he informed her that he does not have to give that to her. He then asked her what her reasonable suspicion for detaining him was to which she replied that she thought he had a gun sticking out of his pocket and that she wanted to make sure he was carrying it properly. Now, at this point, he quickly reaches for what is in his back pocket and takes it out to show her that it's not a gun. Now, I'm not sure how she could have mistaken the folded up walking stick as a gun in the first place, but I did give her the benefit of the doubt initially. However, that immediately went out the door when Mr. Hodges quickly removed the folded up walking stick from his back pocket to show her and she did not even flinch or draw her gun. Oddly enough, she never even told him to keep his hands up or where she could see them in the first place. Now, in my experience dealing with law enforcement over the last 16 years as an attorney, when they really suspect someone of having a gun, they are a lot more cautious and alert than Deputy Goad ever appeared to be in her video. Mr. Hodges then asked Deputy Goad if he is being detained and she said yes, even though at that point she knew the folded up walking stick was not a firearm. He asked for a supervisor and then he walks over to Sergeant Harrison, where he correctly explains the law to Sergeant Harrison and informs him that the reasonable suspicion for him being detained had been dispelled when Mr. Hodges showed that the suspected firearm was in fact a folded up walking stick. Sergeant Harrison and Deputy Gobe then placed him in handcuffs and you ultimately hear Sergeant Harrison saying, just put him in jail for resisting. To make a horrible situation even worse, Deputy Goad blatantly lied on her sworn police report, which the judge relied on at Mr. Hodges' initial appearance to determine that there was probable cause for Mr. Hodges' arrest. In her arrest report, Deputy Goad wrote, I again notified James that I was conducting an investigation and requested that he identify himself. James again refused. At that time, James was placed in handcuff. I was then able to identify the object in James's back right pocket as a folded up walking stick, both silver and white in color, and was observable as it hung out of his pocket. The video clearly shows that she knew it was a folded up walking stick prior to him being placed in handcuffs. So why'd she lie? Well, I will tell you why she lied shortly. Ultimately, the state attorney's office dropped the case against Mr. Hodges eight days later, but that was after he was arrested and had his mugshot forever plastered on the internet. Now, let's break down the facts of this case and apply the law to them. The very first legal issue to look at in this case is at the point of initial contact between Mr. Hodges and Deputy Goad. Was the initial encounter a consensual encounter or was Mr. Hodges being immediately seized and detained by Deputy Goad? We could spend a considerable amount of time arguing which of the two it was, but for the purpose of our discussion today, we are going to say that Mr. Hodges was immediately seized and detained by Deputy Goad. So, what did Deputy Goad need to initially stop and detain Mr. Hodges? To answer this, we turn to the well-known United States Supreme Court case of Terry v. Ohio, which discusses the standard needed for a law enforcement officer to detain someone to conduct a criminal investigation. In Terry, the court wrote, a police officer may reasonably detain a citizen temporarily if the officer has a reasonable suspicion that a person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime. To have reasonable suspicion, also referred to as founded suspicion, the detaining officers must have a particularized and objective basis for suspecting the particular person's stop of criminal activity based on the totality of the circumstances. The determination of whether a detaining officer had reasonable suspicion is made by a judge based on the specific facts surrounding the detention. Although reasonable suspicion is a very low standard, I would like to think a judge would have found that there was no reasonable suspicion to stop and detain Mr. Hodges. But for our analysis, let's pretend there was reasonable suspicion to stop Mr. Hodges to investigate whether he was openly carrying a firearm. Could Deputy 
Goad continued to detain Mr. Hodges after she had determined what she thought was a firearm was in fact a folded up walking stick. Absolutely not. Once the reasonable suspicion has been dispelled, the detention must cease under the law. In other words, once it was determined that Mr. Hodges had not openly carried a firearm, was not, or was not going to be openly carrying a firearm, he would, should have been free to go unless during the temporary detention the deputies developed probable cause that a crime had been committed, which in this case, they didn't. The moment Mr. Hodges showed Deputy Goad that the suspected firearm was a folded up walking stick used as a navigational aid, her reasonable suspicion had been dispelled and he should have been free to leave. Finally, we get to the main question. Was there probable cause to arrest Mr. Hodges for resisting an officer without violence? Florida Statute 843.02 in relevant parts reads, whoever shall resist, obstruct, or oppose any officer as defined in section 943.10 in the execution of legal process or in the lawful execution of any legal duty without offering or doing violence to the person of the officer shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. The two deputies arrested Mr. Hodges under the pretense that he was resisting or obstructing their criminal investigation by failing to provide his name and date of birth. The problem for the deputies and the reason why the state attorney's office declined to prosecute Mr. Hodges is because after Mr. Hodges dispelled their suspicion about the suspected firearm, the deputies were no longer conducting a lawful execution of their duties. Therefore, there was no probable cause to arrest Mr. Hodges for resisting an officer without violence because they could not lawfully continue to detain him and ask for his name and date of birth after their reasonable suspicion had been dispelled. That is exactly why Deputy Goad lied in her report and said that she did not discover that the suspected firearm was a folded up walking stick until after she had placed him under arrest. Based on her report alone, it appears that she had not dispelled her reasonable suspicion that Mr. Hodges was openly carrying a firearm and that while she was conducting her investigation, he resisted and obstructed her lawful execution of her duty by failing to provide his name and date of birth. Under the order of the events in the police report, the arrest of Mr. Hodges for resisting an officer without violence would have been supported by probable cause. Some of you may be thinking to yourself, well, if Mr. Hodges would have been a little nicer, this all could have been avoided. And you're probably right. However, it is important to understand that no matter how you view Mr. Hodges' behavior, the bottom line is he did not break any laws and should have never been arrested. Deputy Goad lied in her police report about the events. But one thing she did not lie about is the fact that she is a tyrant when Mr. Hodges asked her if she was one. Until next time, stay armed and educated.